We have made some major progress on our RB26 conversion on our Nissan Fairlady Z, and today the build continues. So this is an absolute thing of beauty. This is Turbo Yoda's dump pipe with optional wastegate agitator. Is that? Yeah, that's the thing to make it not break yeah. when it heats up and cools down a thousand times. This is incredible. Um, let's put it on. Okay. I will feed it to you. You can jump under the car. I will chuck it under to you, then you feed it up. All right. We'll get it done. So the, the, the turbo's in now for good. It's got a coolant line, it's got an oil line, it's, it's attached, there. that's it. Like we basically filter on this side, dump on that side, done. Yep. So good. Let's go. All right, there you go. Good luck with that. Now I have your V-band marking point here. Yep. We were saying before, I asked you how many times you've done this and we got to hundreds and hundreds and that was as far as you were willing to guess. Yeah. Which is good. That's enough. Because I haven't. This marks a significant part of our build process because once the dump pipe is connected, the major turbo components of our build are complete. So the turbo is now mounted, it is done, the dump pipe is on, the wastegate is done, we've got coolant lines, we've got oil lines, it's looking incredible. So Mr Yoda, can you tell me about what happens next in terms of the piping over here? So he's going to throw an air filter on the front of it, because that'll, that'll work. Just uh, air filter right here, just yeah. stick it on. Yep. Happy yeah, days. Works fine. Um, intercooler pipe is, I've just got one tacked on there that, that we needed to size up to miss the exhaust manifold, yep. it's going to go out through into the intercooler. And we're not using any silicon for that at all. We're no. kind of using this like Wiggins style. Yeah, we're using a Wiggins style clamp. It's not It's not an, a Wiggins clamp, but it's the same style. So yep. it's, um, yeah, they're a pretty cool. Thing. And that's going to give us some movement, isn't it? Yeah, it gives yep. you plenty of engine movement um, and it's virtually, you can't break them. They're, it's like a, it's almost like a solid coupling, but it gives movement. So yeah, they're, nice. They're really cool. So that kind of, in a way, kind of takes the place of what silicon joiners might yeah, normally do. Yeah, yep, that's it. Yeah, cool. So obviously that's going to go down to the front mount, which I was meant to pick up, but it wasn't ready yet. So Marty's gone to Hypertune to pick that up. And then that's going to come around this side into our intake, Yep. which Marty's also picking up. Yep. And so while we wait for that, um, fuel tank. Yep. Now, we used a very special technique yesterday to defume it. Can you explain that to me? So basically, like, it's got, it's got fuel in there, there's, there's fumes. We drain the tank, but there's still fumes and stuff in there. So if you, we've got to cut a hole in it, which doesn't, we're not welding it or anything like that, but you're still cutting things. So to make it a bit safer, what we do is just get a car, run it up to temperature, shove the exhaust pipe over the fuel inlet, and it just, um, the inert gas that's coming out of the car just continue, you just run it for half an hour yeah. and it just purges it basically. Wow. So um, yeah, that's, a, that's an old cop trick from the radiator shop. Yeah, nice. You don't want to get blown up by a fuel tank. <laughs> we don't. It's best <laughs> to not, just don't do it at all. Don't touch, don't weld, don't do anything to a fuel tank. It's a bad idea. You yeah. Give it to a professional, but yeah. we're not welding it. We're actually just cutting a hole in yeah. it. It's just a good idea to, to purge it of any fumes. Nice. All right, well, let's go and modify the fuel tank. All right. So this, this thing's just, it's um, designed so you can put a modern uh, fuel system inside the original fuel tank of an old car. So it's, it's kind of just like a, a surge tank inside the fuel tank. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's just a, like a foam thing with a, that's sort of your tank at the bottom. It's just made out of rubber with the foam. The pump goes on here and it, it all just goes in like that and screws down to the tank. And we're going to be cutting that down here. Yeah. Is there enough? Is there enough depth here for this, or do we need yeah, to modify so you, that? And there's cut a it down minimum a bit? depth that you can, which we're, we're fine with. It's six six inches, 150 mil minimum height, um, up to I think it's 12 inches, to 300 mil maximum. Okay. To get the pump to reach, uh, this thing you just trim down depending on what what 
height your tank is. Uh, so it's got like a this is a this is actually a template looks fancy, but so we, we cut. That's up. what we're going to put on top and cut to we, that. We hole saw, uh, 82 mil, and that just fits in it. And then you use that. That's your drilling template. Once you've drilled it, it got this cool um, thing here. So it's got a cutout in it. So when you to get that inside the tank, you need that cutout so you can sort of roll it down inside, and then your studs come back up, and it just stays in there. Oh, that's so and cool. That is what this sort of mounts onto. So then it's got rubber a rubber seal. So you can put it in, like we've got a nice flat surface, which is excellent, but a lot of older tanks are, are all corrugated. And this rubber thing here, it actually accounts for the corrugation. So it's quite a cool idea. Uh, it sort of saves you having all the surge tanks and all that stuff that gets smelly and noisy. Yep. And then in a case where you don't need five fuel pumps like this, just one in tank pump that makes no noise is a great, like it's the best thing for the for this sort of car. And that's one of the things we we're saying for a Tinder car like this, a swipe left or a swipe right. Yeah. Which way do you swipe? I don't know. Woody will let us know. Yeah, um, is that um, is that it's not going to be stinky and it's not going to be noisy. Yep. Um, hi Cheryl. Uh, which means it just it makes a good car for date night. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. All right. The car's going to be running a Deechworks fuel pump inside our modified fuel tank and we're setting it up so we can run both 98 octane and ethanol with a flex fuel sensor. We've located the best position for the new pump and we're marking the centre point and then we'll drill it out. We're using a hole saw to get a perfect circle and once this is done we can give the tank a quick clean inside and out. the fuel tank successfully chopped, now we can start adapting our new fuel delivery system. The next thing we have to do is connect power to the new fuel pump. We could be surgeons. Look at that. That's, Couldn't we? I love, I love it when stuff works. We probably shouldn't be surgeons though. Some people do this for a job, but they're fixing human beings. They're like, quick, pull the gut out <laughs> and put the other guts in. A lot of people doing poo transplants at the moment. You read about that? No, I haven't. Um, uh, it's a thing. You basically, there was a guy who was really sick, had like gut problems, and they got his wife's poo and stuck it up his bum and it like fixed him when no other medication could. So now they're getting like um, air dried, you know when you air dry foods? They're air drying feces, sticking it in a pill, and then you can take it up your um, butt and um, can help you with all sorts oh, of different hi. things. Okay, and go stick it in. Go. Go, go, go. Hot, hot, hot. Are we in? Uh, it's as in as it's going to get. All right. Well done, Turbo Yoda. That was clean. With our fuel pump all wired up, now Turbo Yoda is sorting out our oil cooling system. So this is the bolt that used to hold the factory water to oil cooler. Yep. And so we need like a double-ended spigot to screw our new fitting on. Yep. And we can't find one easily, so I'm just making this into it. So we just got a tap, three-quarter 16 tap, a die, I should say. And I'm just running it down to make it longer, and then we're going to cut it off. Yep and just screw it in and then the other thing screws on. We won't be attaching our external oil cooler until our front mount intercooler is done, but now at least it's all ready to go. Back to the fuel tank, it's time to prepare this 40-year-old beast for some modern fuel delivery technology.
from Haltech has arrived to continue wiring the car and Marty has returned from Hypertune with our intake manifold and front mount intercooler, both of which have been made to order specifically for this build. And that is cause for some celebration. So this is really exciting. This is our brand spanking new Hypertune intake manifold. Um, the plenum here is like hydro formed aluminium and it's welded by the guys down at the factory, which is pretty impressive. We've got the runners here, they're made, uh, they're billet I believe, look to be. Um, and also got a Bosch Motorsports throttle body. That's awesome because it's e-throttle. It's also nice and compact. And Dave is gonna wire it in, it's gonna look awesome. We're gonna put a Wigan style clamp on the front of it, so no silicon. Um, this will bolt straight to the side of the head, well, side of the head via what used to be the individual throttle bodies. Um, so this is pretty cool because we can still use our factory injector point. You can get these with six or 12 um, injector ports on them as well. It's also handy because you've got some vacuum ports on the back here, so you can put map sensors, blow off valve, boost references, all that kind of stuff in the bottom, so it looks nice and neat. So that goes on there with some bolts that we'll get. Does it fit? It does fit, look at that. It's pretty, man. That looks so good. And I like the theme too, like the silver and the black with the top of the black engine. It looks amazing. It's neat, it'll do what you need it to do. Um, gets rid of some of the complicated factory stuff. And Alan's nodding and half smiling. That's usually a very, very good thing. So a box has arrived from our friends at Dietchworks. I'm pretty excited about We have fuel system parts. We're gonna have injectors and there'll be some other goodies in here, but I've yet to see what they are. Oh my God, so much stuff. This is awesome. Um, what do we got? I think that is a fuel pump. It's always a bit mysterious, the lettering on it. You never know what it is until you open it, but that's fine because I'm a bit of a fan of the old unbox. We had a fuel pump already and we installed it. Yeah, I know, but this is, no, that's good if you, yeah, that's awesome. You know why? Because it's gone in super gramps. Really? Yeah. This is, I don't know what these are, but these look exciting also. It's got code words. Oh, what's that? What is that? Oh, 350 IL. I think that's for the Cresta. Nice one to give us a spare. Um, what's this? Oh, these will be injectors. That's what we want. Yes, look at that. Martin, what size are these injectors, so mate? So good. I think these are 1200s. 1200s. Awesome. So these are gonna be our injectors. They're gonna flow heaps, heaps for what we're doing. Um, Cause it's gonna be on petrol when it's driving around the streets. And then if we feel like putting ethanol in it, we can. Yep. We're gonna put a flex sensor in it. Haltech's gonna know when it's got ethanol in it. Um, we've done the pump as you would have seen already. And now the injectors go in. I'll show you where these bad boys are gonna go. Amazing. So this is the, as I was saying before, these are the factory throttle body thingies. So they are gonna go like that. Yep. Plug up or plug down, Dave? Uh, plug up. And the flute goes there. Yoink, like that, bolted on, happy days. Yep. So Very cool. exciting. This means we can do it. This, this will mean the car will actually start. If we can get a spark from Dave and some juice from this and some timing from our Haltech, then we're good to go. Amazing. Um, Martin, I have one quick question for you. Yep. Over here, something else that's underneath your box of goodies is another box of goodies. And underneath here, uh, there was shamingying going on today, which was a... Um, kind of, you know how it had that weird old school like oil cooler yeah, before? Yeah. Well, we're swapping that out to this, a heat transfer unit. Now, we could go full bozo style and have two like hoses hanging out the light over there. Nah. 
and then uh, you know make it look like a bozo build, or we could actually just do it properly and mount it somewhere down here. But the question is, should it be visible or should it not be visible? It's already black. Yes. Um, Aaron, I don't particularly want it visible. We're going shiny intercooler, aren't we? Just because it looks yes. cool. Yes, yes, we are. Shiny intercooler. Well, yeah. Shiny intercooler for the extra power, Martin. I think we we can't put it in front of an intercooler, can we? Well, might have to. Yes. As long as it's pure, that's all that matters. Pure, Martin. What's pure that? Engine. We're installing a set of 1200cc Detroit injectors onto our engine. Due to the way the intake manifold is designed, we use the original injector ports and the fuel rail slips directly onto the back of the injectors with the help of some petroleum jelly. The injectors have been flow tested and matched and come with a data sheet to help with setup on the programmable ECU once we're ready to fire up the car for the first time. A matched set of injectors means you're less likely to need to do individual cylinder tuning. These injectors can run petrol or E85 and pressure will be supplied by a DW400 high flow pump retrofitted into the original tank. Speaking of the tank, it's time to reinstall it in the car. So what we're doing with the fuel tank here, so we don't have to cut holes in the car, is that Marty has cut up these, um, these are like engine mounts or something, uh, of rubber, and he's cut them, and then we've arrow dieted them on, which means the whole tank's going to drop down around 20 mil. What that's going to mean is that we've got room for our new pump over here and all of our hoses, uh, because there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the top of this and underneath the car. Otherwise, we would have to cut out a hole around that round and then run the hoses down that way. So this way, uh, of course, it's totally reversible, except for the big hole that we just drilled in the fuel tank. Um, but the car body itself uh, will not be affected if this works or it won't. But it's looking good so far. Yep. Is there just one, one nut on the top? Probably two, man, but you want to break in between. Tank press. Have we lost something? Yeah. Mine's not close anyways. Yours? Is yours going to work? No. Bolt extension. Bolt extension. Yeah. We need to watch that YouTube video where the guy shows you how to shorten a bolt and do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the bolts that hold the straps on for the fuel tank, but because we've dropped it by 20 mil, these are now around 20 mil too short, so we have to extend them. to lube it up a little bit, but we'll be able to jam that in there. Sure. Well, the fuel tank's done. That was a big one. So here's a mad little tip for you if you've got a Japanese car. Uh, Turbo Yoda was just asking me if we could try and find a translation or a diagram of this. But what you can actually do is get Google Translate, put that onto Live View, and then that'll let you do really funky stuff like this. So let's say we want to know what this fuse is here. With Google Translate Live View, we just hold that near it, and that will say air conditioning. So that's what that fuse is, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. which is pretty freaking amazing. Like we are in the future. So it's doing a real time translation of what's on there. So over here you can see that that is lights, top left, and you can just scroll through. It's not always perfect, but it does a pretty good job. That's the antenna, that's the washer. So I Why mean- it lolling at you? Did anyone see that? Is it lolling? It said lol. Did it? It's laughing at you, man. But how cool is that? That's amazing. Like that's incredible. So. Um, air conditioning sounds good. Don't know why it has an air conditioning fuse, but I guess that was an option. Uh, anyway, mad tips for your Japanese car. So it's been a massive couple of days on the S32, 40, 260, 280 Datsun Nissan. The RV's in there, which is pretty exciting. The turbo is all mounted up. It's got its lines. The dump pipe, incredible. Yeah, it's all there. And that very cool external wastegate. Yeah, we plumbed in the oil feed, the oil drain, the coolant feed, the coolant drain. 
So that, that side's pretty much good to go. Just needs a filter on it and then some intercooler pipes. That's right. And we dropped the fuel tank, of course, and that got chopped. That's got its new uh, pump in it. Uh, Dave's been fiddling away with lots of little wiring stuff, but it's super neat. I mean, you can just kind of slap the wires on the top, plug them in and go, but this is all really Yeah. And nice. that's the result you get when you get the best, the best in the business to do it, which is what we have right here with these gentlemen that for some reason come down and help us. I don't know why. It could be the salt and vinegar chips, or it could be um, your witty banter, Martin. It could be the banter. It could be. There is a lot of that. Um, so next up, of course, uh, we've got to do the front mount. We've got to mount that up. We've got to do the piping. The intake's got to go on. Uh, we've got to plumb up the radiator. Oil cooler. Um, the oil cooler. What else is there? There's some more fiddly fittings to do. Like fiddly fittings, like the breathers on top of the uh, manifold. So we've got to take them off next as well. Yep. Um, look, this will go on soon. As soon as Dave's finished doing, doing some wiring, we'll throw that on. And then we've also got to work out whether we're actually going to rebuild the rear drum brakes just so we can drive around and test it, or whether we're going to wait and try and upgrade that rear end. We haven't really, haven't really decided yet what we're going we to have, do. Yeah, it's, it's tricky to find it. You've got to sort of mix and match a whole bunch of parts. There's no just one stop thing that goes fixed. That's right. Or if they are, they're not in Australia. We haven't found them yet. Yeah. So there it is. Thank you for watching another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Uh, we'll be back shortly with some more redonkulous RB26 action. You can follow us, of course, on the Facebooks, facebooks.com forward slash your balls. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Turbo Yoda over here. Thank you to Dave. And uh, we'll be back in a few days. So thanks for watching. Straight cut or crinkly? Crinkly, crimpy. Uh, crinkly kits. Crinkly. What crinkly are they called? Kits. What are they crinkly called? Crinkly chips. Crinkle cut. Straight you know, cut I, like, I like a sweet potato chip. Oh, do you? Have you Kumara, had that? Kumara fry. Yeah, Kumara fry. Isn't delicious. that New Zealandish or something? Get that with our fried chicken mum. Oh, the door didn't shut. Oh.